fundamentally, alignment is looking at making sure that how you are spending your time every day is in alignment with what is important to you. Some of the time, you will know that you are out of alignment with your values because you'll feel like either something is missing, something just doesn't feel quite right. It's often what I call the scritchies. You just feel like, oh, you know, something's not quite right, but you can't put your finger on it. Oftentimes, nine times out of ten, it's because there's a misalignment with your values and how they're showing up in your life. And you may have had a circumstance or situation where you have set a goal, you have climbed the mountain, you've got to the top, you're holding on to those brass rings, and you go, oh, is that all there is? Now, sometimes that response is just sheer exhaustion from getting to that place. In other times, it's because you set the wrong goal. You actually went after something that wasn't in alignment with what is important to you. The idea of clarity around your values can be so supportive because it can support you in terms of minimizing the seduction that can often be around making a decision to ensure that you are really doing what is the right thing for you to keep you in alignment. And the other thing that we want to be paying attention to with our values is not dissimilar to those contradictions and extremes we talked about with the wellness wheel, is this idea that living or being fully in alignment in one value could be compromising your ability to do that with other values. And case in point, one of my values is create or to create. And so when I was writing Briefcase Moms, you know, over the moon on creativity and creation, wow, I'm writing a book. And yet, even with all of that, it wasn't, it didn't feel as good as I had hoped it would feel. And as I started to think about it, what became clear to me was this. One of my other values is connection. If you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm a pretty extroverted personality. Yeah? And so I get energy, I get a lot from being connected to other people. Writing a book is a very isolating experience. It's a lot of quality time with you and your laptop. And what I realized was that there was my challenge. So it was very simple. I just started to play a bit of a game with myself. Well, I'll make a phone call, then I'll write a chapter. When I'm finished a chapter, I'll go out for lunch with someone. I'll make, sure I, I'll make sure I have a conversation or connect with people. And by just making that small shift, that brought that alignment back into focus. What you can do at the beginning of this process that's extremely important and helpful is when you name these four values, is to put them somewhere where you can reflect on them. Because uh, chances are, if you're not in the practice of paying attention to them, they may slip from your mind. You know, you might find yourself three months from now saying, didn't we do some, we did a workshop with that woman. Remember, and we talked something about values. And for the life of me, I can't remember the fourth one. So it's great to put it somewhere to reflect on until you get in the practice of, of using them. On this issue of time, and I don't want to offend anyone when I, when I say this, but if you tell me you take a time management course, I will scoff at that because you cannot manage time. Time is. It just is. And it's the great true leveler. We all have the same 24 hours a day regardless of who we are, where we are, and what we do. What we can do is manage ourselves, And we can choose how we spend time. And one of the less sexy exercises in this book, we're not going to do it in this room, but it's something that you can do outside of this room, is to actually take a time picture to see where your time is really going. Because we often have a perception of how we're spending our time. And it's not always matched up with our reality. And we want to see how we can get that in better alignment. And Tracy mentioned earlier, in my introduction, I was the host of a TV special called Maxed Out on Time. And my job in that particular instance was to help this family get their time back on track. And they were a young couple in their early 30s with three boys under the age of six. They were pretty maxed out. And one of my first requests of them was to do this, was to take a time picture. 
measure in 15 or half hour increments from the time you wake up in the morning until the time you wake up in the morning. So let's account for how much sleep. Let's account for how much time spent grooming. Let's account for how much time spent eating. Let's account for how much time spent meal prep. Let's account for how much time on self-care with your children, with your significant other, et cetera. And I asked them to measure that over a two-week period and then to aggregate those results. And once we were able to look at those results, we could start to see where they were at and how they could change. And two of the results that I want to share with you is the following. What they discovered is each of them were spending zero, zero time on self-care, none at all. The other thing was that they were spending two and three quarter hours a week together as a couple. That works out to about seven minutes a day. So no wonder they were missing each other. What became very clear to me and to them, for them to become more successful in their lives, they needed to reallocate how they were spending their time and have it in better alignment with what was important to them. For Christina, one of the things that she needed to look at, she had a real issue with clean floors. She ran a daycare out of her home, and she must have washed her floor almost every hour. So she needed to do some work around that to let up and let go so she could create more space. The other thing was she had volunteered for way too many things. She just kept adding new volunteer positions, adding new volunteer positions, and not shedding any old ones. So she was maxed out there. So she needed to let go of some of those volunteer positions. For Sean, he was a vice principal of an elementary school and also took on tutoring. And what he was doing was he was staying late at school to do marking, et cetera, and not getting home until the kids were basically in bed. His children were saying things like, Daddy, we never see you, right? For him, what he needed to do was to look differently at that. And he decided that what he would do is he would get home in time for dinner, have dinner with his family, spend time with his family. And then once the kids were in bed, these are kids under the age of six, they're going to bed relatively early, once the children were in bed, to mark his papers, et cetera, afterwards. Now, for us sitting in this room, we're looking at it going, well, why would that be so hard to figure out? Like, that's pretty obvious stuff. Why didn't that happen before, on both, for both Sean and Christina? Well, because when you are in the middle of it, when you are in the middle of it, you can't see it. Someone else around you might see it, but you can't see it. Remember at the beginning of the day, I said, oftentimes it's not that great big thing that we do that can support us. It's often making those small incremental changes. Christina was able to go back to dance class. This was something that was important to her for self-care. Sean was able to get out on his bike and ride it, not only on his own, but also with his, but also with his family. And the other thing they did as a couple is they decided that they would wake up 15 minutes earlier than they had been before. So they would have their own private, intimate time together. Now I can tell you that after that, Sean was a much happier guy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's not all about sex or having intimate conversations, but I do believe that they went on and had a fourth child. 